In One Piece, Luffy's bounty is 3 billion berry, but in the real world, it's 750 million Shohei Otani levels, bro. Nah, bro, listen, listen, listen to those. This is very different than chapter, I think, 1070, where in 1070, when he beat Rob Lucci for the first time, we saw maybe a cloud that became his glasses, his goggles, and then he devastated Rob Gooch. We just see Luffy manifest, unironically manifest, a bucket full of paint, which some folks are theorizing is hockey paint, and the helmet with the 56 on it, which is Gomu, 56, Gomu, and nah, the home run swing that Luffy needed to get those explode, like almost like it was a SpongeBob. SpongeBob! Yeah, it's the same energy, bro. You have that swing, and then it goes to J, it goes to War Korea, and then kaboom. Like miniature nukes going off. A bunch of bijou bombs going off, bro. What? Ay, 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 ay. Luffy is phenomenal. He's phenomenal. I say it so many times. This is only the beginning of the final saga. Luffy's skills over the course of this final saga are only going to improve better and better and better and better with Gear 5. And it's part of the reason why Gear 5... Thumbs up! Thumbs up! If you agree with this point I'm about to make. Gear 5's excitement, a lot of it comes from the fact that we don't know what the hell Luffy is going to do. I don't know what Luffy is going to do. He is probably the most unpredictable shonen main character in terms of combat. Because that's how these Toon guys are. I posted on Twitter the scene of uh, Tom making a baseball bat from a log when that one dog, I forget the dog's name, when he tries to bite at him. Luffy does the same thing where he's biting on the tree, makes up the paint. <laughs> Mihawk status. <laughs> the black paint. Oh, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> where did the bucket come from? Where did the paintbrush come from? Where did the black paint come from? How was 56 embedded into that? Where the helmet? Luffy is him. Luffy is so damn dope. He, it's so exciting. We still maintain that sense of danger because these Gorosei, immortal, they're not going down. Even though, yes, we did have uh, the ability of Warkery where he does the, the old school big mom yell. What she did on the chateau this guy turns into an attack and then he tries to like paralyze everything in the area with this war cry thing. The giants, they do buck his assault after his tusks turn into blades. I am bored. If you want to see my full stream reaction, you can go where? To my Cole Requiem channel, link in the box below for that stream. One, two. The stream post discussion on my twitch.tv channel, also link in the box below. Number three. Because we have a three week break, which is a long time for the One Piece, it's gonna be a drought. Savannah status. Come like the end of week two. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, my fix, bro. Where? Oda, please. Where's my aqua? Oh, Oda. Oda, please. We're dying. Where are you? Now! We all know the reason why Toriyama's passing, which I think a lot of us kind of saw coming. And it makes a lot of sense, obviously, because Toriyama one of the greatest of all time. However, this chapter has so much material. Oh yeah, there's gonna be a lot of videos. Theory videos, topic videos, absolutely. And, and I think I have to just admit it. Okay, no, hold on, let me rewind. I don't know, I still don't know. Because even though the Gorosei have been impressive in terms of, at least in this chapter, where you have Marcus Mars just plow through the, the Labo Stratum, and it appears that he almost used hockey in that process. Not too sure what exactly is going on there, because like it's a big explosion, obviously. And then he comes out of that explosion. And then uh, Warcree is just going nuts. And then you have Saturn find like these venom-like bijou bombs. I don't know if they're actually all that lethal, per se. Huh? In terms of their attack power, let's say comparing that to other top tier characters attacks. They're, they're nasty and they're unyieldingly tenacious because they're immortals, fair enough. But for a long time, for a minute, I've been saying, listen, I don't know where the buck stops with the Gorosei in terms of power, but I had a hard time 
perceiving, envisioning that the Gorosei were Admiral level and above. <gasps> Gigantic Conqueror's Hockey Bolts used to like shake the entire area and even guys on the ships are passing out as a result. It is impressive, man. Jay, this chapter does look better than he did before, for damn sure. Obviously, at the end of this chapter, people are like, oh my god, the Admiral's man. Oh, Kizaru's holding back so much more massively, man. He's wounded. <gasps> my wounds are grave, and I just didn't want to kill Vay. He's a big Kizaru right now looks like a puss. <laughs> you know what? I understand. Obviously, stabbing an old friend of yours the way you did is gonna hurt your soul. Did he still commit? Absolutely he did. Was he massively nerfed? No. Only time can tell. I've done videos in the past before talking about the Admiral agenda and, and, and it's essentially over. Honestly, it comes like the Admirals and Young could be on the same level. And if Kizaru does have a full on maximum awakening power, whatever the hell, we will see that against Sanji in the future. We're, we're done. It's over. <laughs> it's over over i don't want to hear it i don't want to see it and this goes triple quadruple for all this zoro stuff oh listen i'm a zoro fan no. i'm keeping it real with you Shh. i am Let's go. i like zoro i'm not a radical fanboy right i'm not a zoro extremist zoro zoro I'm not going out there with a bandana on when I go to the goddamn supermarket going, Lisa Gazoro! Lisa Gazoro! No, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. I like Zoro, but I'm not an extremist for Zoro. But on Twitter, just seeing, of course, on Twitter, I'm specifically talking about other social media platforms. Let me emphasize that for all you watching. It's a bit much, particularly when people really go out of their way to try and dunk on luffy like they tried to downplay the nika the insanity as if luffy didn't knock out rob lucci and then for a prolonged period of time the man was on his tush in 1070 chopper had to run to a location then when he got there it took a minute then afterwards that again luffy over there then it took a few seconds to go from the fabrio stratum to the labo stratum then they had to do a lockdown and the citizens of the Labo stream had to go down to the Fabrio phase, right? Remember all that stuff? Yeah. People had to migrate and then lock down. And then afterwards, we see Luigi get patched up. All the while, Kaku had a clean face. Who had a clean face at the beginning of that chapter. Later on, had a bloody nose. And then he's on top of Sentomaru mounted, giving him the Sukuna speech. Hokure. Omae wa tsuyoi. Luffy is stronger than Zoro. Not only is he stronger than Zoro, but he's stronger than Zoro by orders of magnitude. He's gapping Zoro and it's ocean wide. And that's okay. That's a-okay. This man, Zoro, couldn't even knock out Rob Lucci. I thought that he had actually taken him out. He was done. Go, go, go to my stream, stunned. Cause I thought it was over. And technically, it kind of was. But technically also, like what Kobe, the late great Kobe said. Still to be happy about. You're up too old. Job's not finished. Lucci ain't no scrub. For damn sure. Right? He's Rob Bababucci. Rob Gucci. Rob Enrico Pucci. That's Rob Lucci. I right? ain't no scrub. And to the rest of you. To the rest of you. The fact of the matter is that Luffy crip walked on Rob Lucci. Whereas you cannot say the same thing for Zoro. It's not possible. It's not possible. Which is fine. It's fine. And shouts to Jean Bay for getting Zoro out of there, all right? Because it's time to skedaddle. Shouts to the moment when this man, Warkery, yells, and then Luffy's, <laughs> Luffy's scars, Luffy's eyes get blown off his body. <laughs> oh my God. I, I thought that Nanimo Rob Lucci was like the most impressive thing in terms of durability, in terms of endurance. Nah. Nanimo Rob Lucci loses to Luffy having the scars on his body get blown away. Then he has to just get them back. And like, even on his face, the old school star. Like, that was close. Let me put that back in my room. And then, like, what the?
thought, bro, Luke, Luke, Luffy is just different, man. <laughs> Even in terms of taking damage, he's just different. And it's fun. It, 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 Luffy just so excited right now. He really is. But again, shout out to the Giants, where the Giants, you know, the Sun Shield, the um, um, uh, Salvin, where they do actually blow back uh, Warcree from an attack. The Giants, they do look very impressive, for sure. Uh, again, I've, I've said before, like, for a while now. But Dory and Brogy's bounties are hella, hella underrated, bro. Uh, to me, in my book, they'd be in the billions. Yes, I know. That's a, we'll talk, I can see Dory and Brogy coming in this arc, getting bounties in the billions, and I would say rightfully. Rightfully so. So the elders look impressed with this chapter in terms of, say, they have the hockey, Conqueror's hockey even, yeah. But the Giants do too. And also from a lore perspective, they're also very impressive because now you find out that apparently they've been talking about the Sun God for a minute now. Back during the Mother Camel flashback, Mother Kama brings up the Sun God when she makes Pandora, that uh, little Prometheus. We already found out before that when they arrived on the island, that they knew about the Sun God, Nika. But apparently, it's actually told in the stories now of Elbath. And is that like something that every giant knows? Or do Dory and Brogy have to know this, but let's say other regular civilian giants, they don't know about this. Or let's say, for example, do the noble giants, so let's say Odin, Thor, Loki, all them, do they have their own different thing, their own different lore? Because in my in my personal opinion, I kind of want to see like factions within the giants, where you have the ones that are on the sun god side of things, and then the other ones that are on, let's say, the chaos god. Because they refer to Big Mom when she is destroying the Elbath town, they refer to her as a god of chaos, something of that sort. And considering the last chapter and this chapter, and how they have moves themed off of the sky and the sun. Like for example, the split Skalda. That's a reference to, let's say, Congress hockey, when it breaks apart the clouds and it shows the sunlight or the moonlight, right? The Giants have deep lore, because it looks like they even have better lore than the Buccaneers. I mean, the library is there from O'Hara, and they have their own folklores, which, man, I can't wait, bro. It's going to be so good. Oh, the lore glands are just salivating, Doug, particularly when you have this giant robot at the end of the chapter coming out with energy in the middle of the fire, and the robot is talking about Joy Boy in the same vein as, say, uh, Zunisha or Joy Boy's message to uh, Poseidon. And that's pretty important. And then some of my stream also noticed too, that the robot seems to have like boosters on its back. And I recall Vegapunk saying that, one of them saying that the Vega Force One is modeled after this robot. So this thing has anti, probably anti-gravity tech that made it fly on top of the red line way back when 200 years ago it does suck that we have a three week break because i definitely want that fix and i want to just find out more as soon as possible but at the same time playing the long game i am kind of grateful because obviously we have more time to do more discussions more theories more streams so on and so forth absolutely which there will be there will, there will be a ton for because this is so damn interesting it really is particularly when this giant iron tie thing is larger than Elbath giants, which is very reminiscent to what we see with the ancient giants, what the number giants in Onigashima were modeled after. Does it tie with the continent puller, for example, where the continent puller, uh, no, I can't. Ah, oh, dude, I can't, dude. The video has to be kind of, that's gotta be a shorter video, bro. Oh my God, please. I need it. But this chapter was through and through a banger, bro. It was through and through a banger. Just seeing the gigantic evil hole form compared to Rob Lucci in the forest. I mean, it, it, it's so intimidating. Knowing that he's like exuding all this hockey, it's also hell interesting. The, bro, Rob Lucci's commitment to try and help out Kaku, that, that's a lad move. Rob Lucci, who was assassinating kings of countries and then all these soldiers when he was like 12 years old or something. My man Kaku real quick. Like, bro. What? So Rob Lucci, gets, he gets some love. The stocks, they did dip last chapter, damn sure. But they started climbing again this chapter. The Nika Madness after Warcree does the goddamn Big Mom roar, the hockey roar. And by the way, real quick, I think now from this chapter, it kind of, in my mind, confirms that what we saw with the Black Lightning in the last chapter, the massive teleportation Black Lightning Bolts, those ones. The fact that everyone can see those. But when Warcree did his hockey roar thing and the Randall soldiers couldn't see the sparks of hockey above them. At least no one indicates that they see the hockey-based Black Lightning Bolt. I think that only confirms they're actually different. 
could be wrong i could be but how, how much time do i left yo it's been it's, it's, a, it's a longish video also i apologize look ultimately this chapter slaps like nine nine point five out of ten oda for a minute now in this arc i don't think has missed at all there are some things here that i think are a bit iffy for sure um again i don't like how he skipped all the seraphim stuff saw being alive i still think is a bit like what but depending on the ending of this arc we are on track for i would argue one of the best arcs if not already one of the best arcs in the entire series of one piece particularly now when mars is in the labo stratum getting york may even get punk records like they wanted to and the power plant because that was their stated objective in chapter 1089 that was all three of those things so they could still get those things but the message still goes out because let's say it's not being fed here but it's being fed to the like like location like kamabaka mm. shots to sell my discord the tier three because that was her take and i think it's a very damn dope take where we actually do have Dragon, who talked to Shaka at the beginning of the arc, that still matters for the literal very end of the arc, potentially. Let me know, let me know your stance on this chapter of One Piece. Once again, video give a rating with thumbs up or thumbs up, up to you. Comment, of course, and subscribe. I'm gonna catch you guys on the flip side and be on the lookout for a lot of topic videos to come, cause they're coming soon. S-O-O-N, all caps. Until then. See you, bye bye.